welcome sister aruna ladwa all the way from kuwait and all of you know her very well please i would uh, request all of you all to visit the website if you all haven't it's time to meditate.org and sister aruna we are fortunate that she was with us last time she spoke on detachment uh, i don't know i can't be giving the introduction again it will be a repetition but it's a perfect blend of two cultures east and west which she always portrays and uh, i would also request you all to hear today or tomorrow uh, the international day of yoga which she is also speaking about it's the peace of mind television a pm tv channel india time is 7:30 to 8 i think it's today or tomorrow she is also speak i think it's today yeah she is also speaking about that because this series has started from 14th june onwards till 21st june tomorrow and uh, she is a regular blogger you know she is a regular writer as well many books last time i told about i'll say a few other books it's time to do the inner work it's time to be cool and 50 things there's another book on 50 things and she is also a award recipient of one of the awards women of excellence award uh, so without taking much of the time now i would uh, request sister aruna to go ahead thank you thank you so much manoj bhai and shanti to everyone good morning or good evening <laughs> i think some of you are in vancouver <laughs> getting ready for bed <laughs> anyway happy to be with all of you today So let's just take a moment because I know that um, there's been a lot of chat. So let's just take thirty seconds and just go into silence. And maybe let us uh, try and relate to this topic of economy. So I'm going to ask you this question: Do you think that you are economic? try it okay <laughs> so do you think you are economical you don't have to answer that now but just something to think about actually i would like to start off by talking about values or value and then we'll move into economy so when we actually talk about something of value what are we saying what are what are we actually implying when we say something is valuable it means that it is important isn't it when i say this relationship is very valuable to me it means that this relationship is very important to me or when i say that this uh, job this money yes it's important in other words i'm giving it that importance so when we talk of value of something it's the price tag that i'm putting on that thing somebody else might put another price tag on it many times people say oh you sit how many hours in meditation and we say well 2 3 on some days 4 hours and they say really <laughs> and that's not important to them right but it's important to us and so when it's important we put value on it and then that means we give our time and attention to that thing so if i were to ask you um if i were to ask you right what is the value of this pen it's just a normal pen it's not a, a swarovski or anything like that you would say what maybe 1 but 50 i don't know how much it costs 50 rupees in india i don't know <laughs> okay but when might you pay more for this pen when 
when maybe you have some important signature to make or an important letter to write and it has to be done in that moment. So then any pen will be worth $100, right? So when you really need that thing in that moment, you're willing to pay a much greater price for that. Okay, next question. What do you think is your value? What is your price tag? If somebody kidnapped you, how much should they pay <laughs> in ransom? <laughs> Actually, we are priceless, right? Because there's only one of us. We are a unique piece. So there's nobody else like me. There's only me, only one. <laughs> okay, next question. How much do you value your time? I know that all of you are perhaps working and so then you say, okay, my hourly rate is, again, I'll do in dollars, maybe say $50, maybe $100. Yes, some are 10, $20 an hour. That's what they're getting paid. But that's not really what I'm talking about. How much is your time worth? Yeah, priceless, yeah. So we've come to this conclusion slowly. I am priceless. My time is priceless in the same way my thoughts are priceless. And that's because I have learned or I have chosen to put value to these things, to these resources, right? You know, there's a story that uh, there was this man going around saying, I'm poor, I'm poor. And so somebody looked at him and he said, okay, why don't you give me one of your eyes and I will give you 50,000 rupees. He said, no, 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 no. He said, okay, one ear, maybe 25,000 rupees. He said, no, 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 no. So every time he asked him for some organ, he said, no, 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 no. So he said, then that means you're rich, right? If all these organs are worth so much, but you're not willing at any cost to give them to me, that means that you are rich. But we just measure poverty in terms of money. But there are many people who are poor of time, many people who are poor of love, poor of kindness or positivity in their life. So this is why I just you know, wanted to put an emphasis to this, that a value is something that you put on something, right? Each one of us decides what's the value of something. So now um, when we come to economy, it, we say, right, it's the value of economy. So when we add the value of economy to the soul, we are adding value to the soul. If somebody knows how to budget, or live economically, that's, that's like an art, that's like a skill. And we adding that skill to the soul. So imagine that we had a number of values in the soul. So again, these values <laughs> add value uh, to the soul. You know, they, they, there's an expression they say that um, if you want to check your thinking, then check your life. If you want to check your thinking, check your life. Which means that, how are you spending your time? How are you spending your resources? That will reveal how you are thinking. Where are your thoughts going? So if you do spend frivolously, then obviously you probably spending your thoughts frivolously, wasting your thoughts. Actually, let's just take a moment to talk about waste as well. So again, what is waste? Waste is a very relative term. 
what may be waste to me may not be waste to you. But we are all wasting something. We might see somebody wasting food, but we're wasting our thoughts on seeing them waste their food. Do you see? So we're so quick to judge others on waste. But what are we wasting? What are our invaluable resources? I mean, there's so much attention now on nature, on matter, the elements, trying to save those. So of course, water, air, earth, soil, this is so precious. How much of it are we wasting? At the same time, you give a person who's thirsty, hungry, you give him a plate full of diamonds and gold. Is he going to want that? He's going to say, no, no, no. I want the water. So what do we put importance to? We put importance to these natural resources, these things that keep us alive. Who wants a, a kilo of gold when you're dying of thirst or hunger? So we know the value of something and we know the value of not wasting something. Now, karma philosophy tells us that if we are wasting anything, then we will not have it at the time of need. Yeah, if we are wasting anything, like if I'm wasting my time, then I will not have time to do the things I want to do. And in Hindi, it's a nice saying, you know, aap samay ko barbaad karenge, to samay aap ko barbaad karenge. If you waste your time, then time will waste you, in a sense. So let us at least be mindful of where we are wasting, how we are wasting, why we are wasting. Isn't it better that that thing gets put to use, to good use? So say, for example, you have things in the house that you are not using. Give it to somebody else, let them use it. Because the joy that they will get, that joy will come to you in the form of blessings. Okay, so I'm leading up to now economy because when we talk of economy, economy does not mean, yes, as Sister Genti said, does not mean to be a miser. Let, let's talk about what economy doesn't mean, okay? so. As I said, economy doesn't mean hoarding things, like keeping things in the house for a rainy day or um, <laughs> for our insecurity. We think, oh, maybe let me have 10 pence in case one runs out. So I keep 10 pence, but it takes me two years to use them and then they dry out. So that's not sensible, right? That's not being quite economical. So what what economy is not, is definitely not being a miser. Miser means that you have and you keep, but you're not using it for the greater good. You have lots, it's not that you don't have, but you're not using it, you're not applying it. And when we don't apply something, it's like we don't plant that seed. So how are the fruits going to grow? What return? Am I getting from that, whatever I have? I'm not. So it's like, again, it sits in your safe deposit box, but you're not doing anything with it. Yeah, there's a lovely story of this man who got to heaven and, um, and so God said, he said to God, God, please, you know, I'm a millionaire, a billionaire these days, and he says, please, I'll give you a billion if you just give me one year, one more year to live on earth. And God said, no, 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 that's not possible. He said, okay, one month. And I'll hurry up and I'll come back fast. And God said, no, no. Again, he pleaded one week. God said, no. He said, one day, few hours. <laughs> and God said, okay, I'll let you go down for a few hours. 
as soon as he came down to earth, he went straight to his safe. He opened his safe and there was all his money inside. And he said, okay, Lakshmi, you're the only one who can help me now. I have to give all this money to God to have a few more hours on earth. And Lakshmi says, well, I can't help you because you kept me locked in here, in the safe box all this time. So I cannot help you, I'm sorry. So isn't that what we do? We have all our plentiful resources, but we are not applying them. Okay, this is what it means to be a miser. Okay, miser also means what? Penny pinching. How many of us, like actually in English, uh, it's the expression, um, well, yes, yeah, save a penny to spend a pound. Or does a Hindi make it? Um, saste roye. Sasta roye bar bar mehenga roye ek bar. Exactly. Yeah. So, this is what economy is not, you know? Like you go and buy a pan for two dinar or two dollars and it burns. And not only you are spending money, but how much energy you are spending on thinking about it. Oh, now it got burned. Oh, now I have to keep it safe because no, not everyone knows how to use it. Then when it gets burned, oh, now I have to go and buy another one. Then you have to go and drive to the mall. Then you have to find parking. Then you have to find the right one again at the right price. But if you just bought one good one for $10, it will last you five years. So this is where you weigh up, right? This is economy. You weigh up what are your resources and how you are spending them. So yeah, economy is not hoarding. Economy is not being a miser. Economy is not penny pinching. Economy is also not judging how others are spending their money. Because like I mentioned earlier, I'm judging them for this thing, but then I'm wasting my energy, my thoughts on something else. So economy is definitely not <coughs> about creating more waste thoughts. Economy is about using my resources and putting them to the greater use for greater benefit. So now let's come to economy. So basically, yes, uh, Sister Gently talked a lot about it. I will just share a few of my thoughts in terms of thought, energy, and economizing on thoughts. But before that, let me say, why is it that we work so hard to economize our thoughts? We economize because we want the peace and happiness, right? We want the sukh and shanti. If you create a lot of thoughts, it affects your decision-making, your discrimination, it creates stress, it gets the adrenaline going in the body, makes you tired, makes you uh, sleepless, makes you lose your concentration, makes you lose your happiness. This is why we have to economize on our thoughts. So that means, can I take few thoughts to think about one thing? And can I say the same thing with a few words rather than to use 10 or 20? And the other thing people do a lot is <laughs> repeat. So they'll tell you the story one way. They'll tell you the same story, but in another way. It's the same story. So am I, am I repeating? This is also waste. And really when we do, and Sister Genti mentioned this too, right? When we sit in silence, and this is my experience when I've had good yoga, I've come out of the meditation and I have to say something or I have to have a meeting, then things come out easily. There is clarity in our thoughts. 
So this is why we need to economize on our thoughts. Otherwise, why would we do that? Let, let's, take, let's take money as an example. Why do you economize on your money? Okay, you're earning something. I think there was a, also a quote by Charles Dickens. And he was saying, if you, if you earn 20 pounds and you spend all the 20 pounds, you will be in misery. But if you earn 20 pounds and you spend 19.5, then you will be happy because you're living within your means. So why do we save the money? So that then we can do the things we want to do, right? You save, say, for example, you save, you say, I won't buy gold <laughs> this month. I won't buy an expensive car. Like I know, like my brother, like he likes to, um, where he goes, he likes to stay in a good hotel. So then he will go economy class because he feels that's a short time, but the hotel is a longer stay. So then he'll spend more on the hotel, like a five, six star hotel. Do you see? So we're saving somewhere so we can benefit ourselves somewhere else. And this is what I'm saying about the mind and the thoughts. I'm saving on access thoughts, right? Access means extra, that which is not necessary. Once you decide what you're eating today, <laughs> kalas, don't think anymore. How many times we say, what shall I cook today? What shall I cook today? What shall I cook today? What shall I eat today? Right? Actually, they say 70% of the thoughts we had yesterday are repeated today. 70% of the thoughts. So this is why we have to learn, right? We have to learn to decide and put full stop and say, okay, this is what I'm eating. This is what I'm doing. And that's it. Don't think too much. If you think extra, that is waste. Just as you take extra food on your plate, which you can't eat, that is waste. So that's why we need to economize. Yeah, this is what I'm trying to tell you. This is why we need to economize. So now we can use our thought energy to create wonders, to create magic. I mean, they also say, they, uh, the researchers, scientists, they also say, we are only using 10% of our mind. Actually, they say brain, but only using 10% of our brain, which means 90% is not being used. It's going to waste. But when I learn to economize my thoughts, then each thought becomes very powerful. Just as when I economize my, my money, actually, there is stories, right, of um, mothers who come to the Brahma Kumari, especially in India. And they have very little, they learn, they're not earning, they're just saving from what they get. And from that, they want to give 10 rupees or they want to give one brick to the building that's being built because they economized. They gave up their uh, selfish ulterior motive and said, okay, I want to put this to some other use, some better use. There's another example, because we were talking about this in our <laughs> uh, Dharna class yesterday. So one of the Arab brothers, he was sharing with me, he said, and they're well off family, okay? And uh, he said that uh, his mother was uh, sewing her pajamas. And so his sister came and said, Mama, why are you you know, sewing these pajamas, get yourself a new pair. You give 50 dinar, you give 100 dinar to the poor people. And why don't you spend on yourself? And she said, she said, look, that 50 dinar, 100 dinar I give will take me to heaven. But this pajama, new pajama is just for me. It's not gonna take me to heaven. So do you see my point? My point is, yeah, what are we valuing? What are we putting our um, attention on? 
What are we giving value to? And as a result of that, what are we doing with what is left? See, when people are misers, what they do is they are saving, but that's just one side of the story. They're not then putting it to good use. Whereas when I'm being economical, it's, it's two ways. I'm saving, but then I'm also planting some good deeds. Okay, even if it's say I'm not a holy person or something like that, but okay, you're, you're saving money so that then maybe you can have a vacation. In other words, you can have a break, you can treat yourself, right? You're trying to put it to some positive use. This is the point. So again, I ask you, check yourself. Are you being economical? or not economical with your thoughts economical with your time economical with your resources with what are our resources our energy they say actually like if you're taking the car try and merge two three things together two three tasks two three jobs or shopping whatever try and merge it together not you go once come back go once then you're also saving the fuel, but you're also saving your energy. This is about us. I'm saving my physical strength and energy, which means then I have time and energy for other things. So actually, let us talk about people like us, okay? Who have, in a way, dedicated our life to this kind of way, this path. So why did we do that? We have chosen to say, okay, okay, I don't want to get married. Okay, I don't want to have children. Okay, I don't want to start a new business or a company. I don't want to increase my desires. Why are we doing all that? What's the point? So that then we have more time to give to everyone, to others. This is what I always used to think. I, I used to think if I get married, then I'm only going to serve three or four people. But if I'm free, then I can help so many more people. So again, this is economy. This is thinking. If I'm saving here, what can I put there? So what I'm saying about resources is all the resources that you use. I want you to check today, even like the water you drink. They've done studies on this. People take one glass of water, drink half of it, and half of it goes to waste. And in whose account does this go? That goes into my account, not, the, not into the account of who gave it to me. You can't say, no, no, I was given a glass of water but it's your choice, right? Actually, what we do here is like, like say for example, I have my glass here, right? So what I don't drink, I give it to the plants or I put it outside. I'm quite conscious that I don't want to waste this water. So as we are conscious of planting these good seeds, these good deeds, then the return comes back to us. That's, where, that's why we are being conscious. So I want to talk yeah, about how we can then donate and put to good use. Remember I said economy has two sides. So when I'm being economical, I'm using what I have, the resources in a worthwhile way. I'm planting the, the seeds of good deeds. And this is what is helping the soul in terms of blessings. The earth is blessing me, the water is blessing me. As I'm using people's time in a worthwhile way, I'm not wasting their time. They are blessing me. Do you see, and these blessings come, and I always say blessings help us to oil the wheels of our life. Blessings help us to oil the wheels of our life, which means then our life is smooth. We are happier. 
Okay, just think about it. Say there's a pilot and the pilot knows that one of the engines has failed. And then the pilot is screaming and shouting, oh, we're going to die, we're going to die, everybody hang on. Um, you know, he's screaming off from the speaker. He's, you can hear him screaming and panicking. How are you going to feel in that moment? Okay, then you have a pilot who, same thing, the engine has failed, but he says, okay, everybody stay calm and we're gonna get through this and we're gonna have a safe landing. How are people going to respond? Right? Now, you are the pilot of your life. So what is your energy? How are you using that energy? And let, let me add here also, when we manage our energies, right, a bit at a time, it adds up, okay? If you start a bank account or a, a piggy bank, and today you put whatever, 10 rupees, $10, you don't become rich tonight, overnight. You know, in the same way you, you do some press-ups and push-ups, you don't go look in the mirror and think, okay, have I toned up today? Have I lost some weight today already? No. But if you do it every day, every day, 10 push-ups or every day, half an hour walking, every day you save, every day you manage your thoughts, every day you save a little more of that energy, then over time you can see the result. You know, we always say that, yes, nobody can know what you're thinking, but they can feel what you're thinking. So what are we working on? When we are working on our thoughts, we are actually working on our vibration. Because as we reduce the thoughts, our vibration is slowing down. So anyway, what I was saying is going back to donation. Let's go back to donation. So when I am donating, I'm putting to good use my energies, my resources, then yes, my life is more fruitful. My, my life is much richer. Like right now, I'm saying, I, I feel very good with my life. I feel that, yes, I'm trying to use every moment in a worthwhile way. Actually, in Hindi, when we say economy, we don't actually say economy, we say safalko. We, in Hindi, it's, the expression is put to a good use. Economy still sounds like um, you're depriving yourself of something. But in Hindi, it implies you are benefiting yourself because you're putting it to a greater use. This is why they say, no, the donation, what you donate has more value than what you keep for yourself. So there's another story about this, that this man, he's going to the temple and he's made these uh, sweets. So he's carrying the sweets to the temple and he meets a friend and they say, hi, hello, etc. So his friend says, can I have a sweet? He said, no, no, no. Not yet. I'm taking them to the, you know, to offer them to the gods. He said, okay. He goes to the temple, offers them to God, and then he comes back. He comes back and now he offers his friend. But what is he offering his friend? He's not offering the sweets, but he's offering prasad. Prasad, which is holy food, offered food. It's the same food, but now it has more value. It has more value, right? It's the same food, but now because he offered it to God, it's become holy and divine. So this is my 
um, well, my point that when we put to good use what we have, we are offering it to, to God. We are offering it to others. We are not using it selfishly for ourselves. When your life is being used for others, and I mean in a, in a positive way, to give peace and shanti to the soul, then that is a very fruitful life. This is what you see about the gurus of India. They gave up their own life to live for others. How much are we purely living for ourselves? See, even in the West, they say, I'm doing voluntary work. And they think that's a big deal. But in India, we don't say voluntary work, we say seva. Which is what? Is service to others. So again, this concept of, oh, I'm giving up my good time, but here, no, I'm getting something greater in return. Do you see? But this is where, if I've been sensible in managing my energies, then yes, I can donate my wealth. Yes, I can donate my time. Yes, I can donate other resources. Actually, the other thing that came up in the meeting yesterday was uh, somebody was saying that they don't come to the morning meditation class because they want to save on the gas. Is that sensible? <laughs> so you see, this, this is my point. You, you're saving on the gas, but you're missing out on so much more. Where will you find a gathering of spiritual people meeting together. You come to the center, you feel, well, you blossom up when you come to the center. You're revived, right? It's like going to the mosque. It's like going to the temple, to the synagogue, to the church. Why do we go there? You can do the same worship at home, but it's the feeling of being closer to God. It's the feeling of like-minded company. That's why we make the effort to go. So what is some gas or petrol in comparison to the benefits? And this is what you need to weigh up. I'm giving up this, but what am I getting in return? Same thing with morning meditation. People say, why should I wake up in the morning? I'm missing out on my sleep. And I would say, but you're missing out on <laughs> this divine, magical, wonderful experience with God. And that is priceless. You will not have that same experience later in the day. But that's again only possible when I've been economical. Okay, so economical with the resources. Yeah, as I was saying, manage your day. See today, how much am I wasting today and how much can I save? Actually, um, Sachin Pai has been talking about saving uh, a lot of the nature, right? So he's been talking about saving rainwater, for example. I mean, when we were in uh, Vancouver, we did a lot of uh, this uh, work in the center. I, I remember studying, um, yes, how to manage things and we were even prepared for the earthquake and everything had the toolkit by our door and everything. So yeah, this is where we need to be um, more economical. Okay, finally, I would like to say that everything that we do, we do for experience. Everything is experience, right? The purpose of our life is to express and experience. So why I'm sharing this is we want to save on our energies because we want to have a greater experience in life. Like I said, back to money, we, because I keep relating to money because maybe you can understand it more clearly. When you are saving your money, it's because you want to save for a better experience later, even in your retirement. 
When you save your money, it's because you don't want to beg from others later. When you save your money, it's an act of sensibility. And all this can be applied to our mind and our energies. When I'm not being economical, then I have to beg, right? If, I, if I've not been able to be economical and save my time, I have to beg from others. Oh, will you help me? Will you do this for me? And really the more I take, then the more I have to pay back. And actually it was Sister Genti who told me many, many, many years ago uh, this point. And she says, the less we take from the planet, the less guilty we feel. And I never forgot that. So the less we take from wanting this and that, then we don't become responsible. Like say, for example, there's a bar of chocolate. Do you know what, what energy has gone behind that bar of chocolate? Do you know that little kids are used? I mean, they're actually taken away from their mothers and they're put into these cocoa farms to work day and night to pick the cocoa. And then the farmers get very little, the big uh, companies, corporates, they mint, mint, <laughs> pun on mint, they mint the money. And it's abuse, it's misuse. And so, yeah, I have to be, yes, maybe it's being too conscious, but as I eat this chocolate, I'm taking from the planet, right? That means I'm perpetuating that industry. So this is my point that, yeah, in order to be economical, let me take less, let me take only that which I need. Uh, and also Sister Genti said that, right? Uh, Mahatma Gandhi's quote, there's, there's enough for everybody's um, need, but not everybody's greed. And then there's just these stories from the organization. As you heard, it's Mama's month. So when Mama came to the organization, uh, she didn't have any money, right? She didn't have any wealth. She, she just came by herself. Brahma Baba, when he came, he donated a lot of his wealth. And so Mama, the way that she made her fortune is by economizing. So mama would go around and close the lights if they were on unnecessarily. She would turn off the tap, save the water. And then mama would also clean, let's say like methi or coriander. So others had cleaned it very you know, quickly and kept the waste or the rest to one side. And mama would go through that and mama would pick more leaves or more stems from that. So when she does that, that's going into her account. Do you see? Because she's saving. She didn't bring, she's not donating, but she's saving and that's the same. You may not be able to donate, but if you can save that which is going to waste, then that goes into your account. And Brahma Baba too, right? The way Brahma Baba used to, used to economize is, again, it's not that, I mean, the children had everything. They, had, they were spoiled um, with love and everything. But again, Brahma Baba taught them that what you have today, what you have in front of you today, appreciate, learn to appreciate what you have today because you may not have it tomorrow. And in this way, Brahma Baba taught them to not waste or um, to not take for granted. Because today you might have a lot of bananas and you say, no, no, I don't like bananas. I don't want bananas, but tomorrow there are no bananas. So if I've learned to use that and appreciate it and respect it, then 
chances are more will come because the energy, it's an energy flow. The energy will come. And then there are also stories in the organization where really there were some brothers or sisters who, who used to fast. I don't want to say starve, but they used to fast so others could eat. So imagine their renunciation. They used to tie a belt to their stomach so they wouldn't feel the, the pain of hunger. So yes, the organization, maybe it looks rich now, but they went through these very trying times before where some had to pay the price, some had to economize so that others could live. So anyway, I will stop here now. Um, and I'm happy to take any questions. Manoj Bhai, is that okay? Yeah, yeah, that's perfect. I mean, I was just uh, thinking about the beautiful uh, explanation in the end, which I liked it, particularly how donation is similar to savings. So, I mean, though Brahma Baba got all the wealth, but Mama tried to economize on that, and that was a perfect, and she went ahead, she became Lakshmi before Narayan. So, like, I think saving is very important, very rightly said. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, we have uh, around 10, 15 minutes. So if people want to, I'll just start unmuting you because there was a little bit of disturbance that time when Devi was speaking. So I'll just uh, unmute you all so you can ask questions directly or if you want to type it in the chat box and then I can read it for Didi. So you all can please feel free to ask. Can I ask? Yeah, 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 yeah. go ahead, Dr. Mehta, yeah. I don't know, I mean, um, India is always been a country where a lot of economy was uh, a way of life most of the time as I grew up in even in a rich family but we used to economize on everything uh, as I grew and when I traveled west as a doctor the first time I worked in London uh, every morning I would go and collect blood from the patients and there were hip of syringes and needles we threw away. And I used to always feel, I wish that I could take it back home and give it to people. And that's the way we used to think. And then once you start living in the West, then you realize that it's the economy of waste. If you stop using it, the economy will go down and you know there'll be no progress. So it cuts both ways. Uh, I'm sure that uh, as an Eastern mind and a heart, I love economy, but does economy, of course, we are talking in terms of spirituality, but economy in terms of, uh, you know, like uh, what is happening now in COVID. We spend thousands and thousands of crores on doing things to sustain. So is it uh, the Western thinking and Eastern thinking? And we are a, we are a conglomeration of both. Uh, is economy necessary in some part of life, especially in our personal life, spiritual life, but is it necessary in public life where health is concerned, where progress is concerned? You know, I, I was gone for a few moments towards the end of your comment. So okay. yeah, I just froze, I don't know what happened. Just the last bit, I got to the point where you said about East and Western. My question was uh, that Eastern mind and Eastern uh, thinking is, we are economic. Uh, that's how we learned and grew. When we yes. went to the West, we realized that progress, um, they thought of economy of the waste. We thought it was the economy of waste, but that's how they progressed. So yes. uh, uh, where do we, uh, is it in personal life? Yes, economy. Balance, is it? What is your view on it? Well, you have lived uh, all the time in the West, and now you have come back to East, but we were living in East and went to the West. So, how do we? But I want to tell you that everybody is now coming back to the East. <laughs> so, they're turning a full circle. And you know how many shops now, even the modern, uh, furniture shops, they have wooden bowls, wooden spoons, 
uh, earthenware bowls. I mean, they, they all want to go back to their roots, even the, the pots, you know, they're encouraging using these clay pots for cooking. I mean, and of course, solar ovens. I mean, we have, uh, we're cooking in our solar oven and it's amazing. So yeah, everybody's returning back and they realize the need to. In fact, um, when I was living in Canada, those of you who are living in Canada, you will know, right, David Suzuki. And uh, he's a scientist and he used to post uh, many articles on the planet and the resources. And he's basically, frankly, telling everyone that we don't have enough resources to continue. But of course, the government is not saying that because everybody will panic. So I think it's an illusion, Dr. Mehta, that we are progressing by, let's say, wasting or not recycling. But I think many are waking up and realizing that uh, as much as possible, we have to go back to our roots. We have to, I mean, this thing with plastic bags, right? In the UK, in USA, in India, in Rajasthan, just a simple thing. If everybody just used cloth bags, cotton bags instead of plastic bags. So yes, it was fashion and fad to, you know, um, use and throw, but I think Dr. Mehta, everybody's waking up and already people in India, some of them are still doing that because they didn't, they didn't go through the cycle of eating and obtaining and uh, wasting. And so I don't know if that answers your question, but uh, those are my thoughts. Okay. Uh, thank you. I'll just take one quick question because uh, uh, we are short of time. Uh, it's Hilal sister's question. She's asking, she's from Turkey. She mentioned about how do you take procrastination in the context of what you have shared so far? And she's also saying, lately I am undecisive. Thus procrastinate this or that. So what is the solution to come out of this state of procrastination? Well, well, procrastination, I mean, the term is not a positive term. Hilal, yeah, I know Hilal, so <laughs> yeah. Yeah, procrastination is not a positive term. So if I'm procrastinating, that means I'm definitely putting up something that I know to be right or that which, which I should do. So it's not good use of my time to do that. When I'm procrastinating, inside I know I should be doing it. So in other words, you're putting off a good thing. So actually this will go against the grain of your soul because a part of you knows that you should do it, but you're not doing it. And so that creates the restlessness in the soul. So either accept and say, I don't wanna do it, which again, there is some peace in the soul or um, do it, just do it. However it's going to be, just do it. Don't wait for perfection. Right. Uh, thank you, uh, Sister Aruna, for the answer. Uh, let me just uh, quickly take a few minutes to s do the announcements and then we'll go in the meditation mode. Uh, I'll just share the screen for all of you. I hope it's visible, I'm sure it is. Uh, yes, right, Anu sister and Pooja Ben, yeah. I'm sure the screen is seen, yeah. Yes, 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 brother. Yeah, thanks, thanks. Okay, so uh, moving on on our journey of the Values for Life series, uh, you know, Mama's month is coming close and Mama Day is actually coming to very close, 24th of June. And then overlapping that is the next month is uh, July of Didi Manmohini. So I think we have next two values on that, which we have chosen. And uh, again, we have chosen Asha Didi for that because she can really do justice to that responsibility. Zimmedari or Zimmewari. Again, the times remain the same. We'll intimate you shortly. Another big exciting news for all the Vihasa participants and the Vihasa facilitators here. You know, Dadi Janki was the one who started the Janki Foundation, it was in her name. And these beautiful eight or nine souls who have contributed, who are the Vihasa experts. And you can see one of them has been highlighted, Sister Maureen, all the way from GCH UK, London. So we are fortunate that after Sister Aruna, now we are getting many people from London. So 
we are having her again uh, for the workshops. She'll be covering the next two subsequent workshops. We'll intimate you shortly again about this. So it's on 4th of July. And yeah, now just to summarize, because many people really get confused. What are your programs? Kab hota hai? We don't know. So we have just tried to, from this month onwards, Mama's month again, we have tried to collate it on one slide and make it sort of very concise for you. So we have a advanced facilitator training program. All the advanced trainees, you know, just make sure you attend that 26th and 27th next weekend. And responsibilities by Asha Didi, as I mentioned. So with this, uh, that's our email, vehasaindia at gmail.com. The website is www.vehasa.in. And just for your information, all these are there on the, on the YouTube. Uh, we just download them after 24 hours, omshanti.tk forward slash workshops. And we'll be sending the Zoom link also soon, half an hour. Apologies, Aruna sister, last time it was a bit late. So we'll just send it in half an hour, but make sure that the Zoom links are very temporary after seven days, since they occupy a lot of space on the system. So they uh, will be deleted. And so it will remain as a permanent one on the omshanti.tk YouTube links. So with this, I would now stop sharing. And Dr. Mehta has already interacted with uh, Sister Aruna, but I would want to propose, ask him to propose an official vote of thanks to Sister Aruna. Dr. Mehta, please. Yeah. Think, uh, we are enjoying every moment with uh, Aruna Ben and uh, I, the depth to which she takes us is uh, very interesting. And uh, thank her for sharing her time with us. Thank you, Aruna Ben. Thank you so much, Dr. Mehta. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. So over to uh, Sister Aruna now for the last meditation. So about five minutes, right? So everyone just sit comfortably. Try not to hold on to anything. Just completely relax your body. And now relax your mind. And I turn to my inner world of thoughts and feelings. And I begin to observe my every thought. And as I'm observing the thoughts, I realize that they begin to slow down because now they are under observation. Until I come to just this one thought that I am a peaceful being. To stay in this one thought, trying to feel the thought, trying to be aware of the thought, and allow this one thought to completely impress on every atom of your body. I, the soul, am a peaceful soul. Just feel what it feels like to have few thoughts, but very powerful thoughts. And now I would like you to visualize your day. And I want you to create another powerful thought that everything's going to become easy and everything's going to become successful. Your day is going to go easy. 
and you're going to be successful. Just visualize what you will be doing for the rest of the day and, and visualize the people that you will come across, that you will have to interact with. And just send them light ahead of time. It's like the light is opening the way for ease and smoothness. And then let's just take a moment to connect with God. God is the Supreme. God is the Almighty. God is the Supreme Source of all the values, all the powers. And as I just think about God, I'm automatically pulled into another realm. The realm of light. I'm now under God's light. And this is the only light I need. This light lights up my life. God's light is a very soothing light. It cools my spirit. And just calm and peaceful. And now when we return back to this moment, I bring that calm and peace into my life, into every area Shanti. Thank you, sister.